10 contestants trimming down to an ultimate winner who will help us in shaping the 2025 national budget. I am more than confident that my proposed budget, the agriculture sector, is designed to drive economic growth, sustainability. I allocate 3.2 billion kwacha for the general operations of schools. We will invest in building and maintaining water purification systems, drilling boreholes in drought-affected areas. 1.5 billion will be allocated to local government and community participation in order to improve financial management capacity. The 2025 national budget aims to address the following. Climate change and impact it has had on the agriculture sector. 27.54 billion kwacha be allocated to the energy sector. The opportunity for these young people is for them to influence the budget and drive it in a direction that is in the best interest of the people of this country. Welcome to another episode of The People's Budget brought to you by the Center for Trade Policy and Development with partnership with the Tax Justice Network. Today on the show, we will see the contestants going head to head, presenting a part of their budget. But in the last episode, they presented before the judges their challenge. They had to meet members of the community and hear what the community wants in the 2025 national budget. They presented before the judges and had to be evaluated. My name is Dingindava Jonah Puyoya. Let's start off, first of all, with seeing what the judges decided in the last edition of the People's Budget. The last episode had the contestants present before the judges, and they made a decision on who among the 10 will be the seven who make it to the next round. Here is the elimination. And uh, just to share with you some of the expectations that uh, we were expecting as judges, um, of course, when you are presenting, you have to introduce yourself, you have to know who is presenting. And uh, the person who presents the budget, um, mostly for the national budget, is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a Minister of Finance. So, and you address the speaker, not so. I think it's very important to improve on voice projection and then, you know, accuracy in terms of how you're pronouncing words. But coming to the core issue, I think uh, we just wanted you to appreciate that uh, when you're presenting a budget, a budget has got two sides. There's an uh, expenditure side, as you're allocating the resources. There's also now the revenue side, domestic resource mobilization. So these are the critical areas that we are looking at. It has to balance. You know, where are you getting your resources that you are allocating in these sectors that you are presenting? So that was very critical and uh, I must make mention that uh, yeah, we expected a lot of you to you know, bring out this area, you know, because you cannot allocate what you do not have, okay? And you, do not, you cannot allocate something where you do not know the source. Again, the other key aspect, um, of course, Zambia is faced with a lot of challenges currently. So whatever you are presenting, it has to be in line with the current situation that is prevailing in the country. So even as if you are presenting on the health sector, how has the current situation impacted the health sector? How is the current situation, let's say the energy crisis, impacting the agriculture sector? So these are the key issues, the debt challenge. How are you balancing, you know, debt service as well as also providing resources to those sectors you are allocating because debt also comes with the obligation of debt service. So we expected you to go a bit further and, and, and the likes. So these were, there were major you know, criteria of assessment in your presentations. So it was not merely English. I know we can speak good English. Zambia, I think, is one of the countries that speak, uh, uh, citizens that speak good English. But you needed content. Thanks, Emmanuel. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, right. Just your take and your feedback. Ah, the tough part now is here. For us to say goodbye to three of you that are going home this afternoon. For each, okay. Divine, please step forward. You scored 62% on average. You're not going home, you can step back. 
Margaret, please do step forward. Margaret, you scored 54.2% on average, and with that score, you are going home. You'll be the first in the group to be going home today. I would advise that you work on your confidence. I believe you're still young. You still have so much life ahead of you. So if you can just, you know, convince people that you know what you're talking about. Look, you can sell ice to an, an igloo, you know? So you have to know just how to be able to be confident and be that person. The second person going home today with a score, an average score of 53.3% is Mr. Busolo. Step forward. Unfortunately, our, the third person we're saying goodbye to today who scored an average percentage of 57.5%. So doing really well as well. But I think this person lacked a sense of confidence as well. And like I said, confidence is such a factor um, amongst you guys. But we hope to see, you know, as those others, the ones who continue to progress will do more. Josephine, please step forward. The road ends here. But thank you so much for your participation. And I hope that this will encourage you to at least um, be more confident, be calm. Don't panic. Yeah. Don't panic. Just relax. And then they were seven. Three contestants have been eliminated from the top 10 in this edition of the People's Budget, and now we've got seven of them. This show is brought to you by the Center for Trade Policy and Development with support from the Tax Justice Network, and we sat down with the Executive Director of CTPD, who tells us why they're doing this and how important it is to national discourse. My name is Isaac Mwepopo. I'm the Executive Director at the Center for Trade Policy and Development. Uh, and at CTPD, we are proud to bring back uh, to your uh, screen your favorite uh, TV show, The People's Budget. Uh, this is an annual event uh, or program that the Center for Trade Policy and Development uh, runs uh, to give an opportunity to uh, promising uh, young people uh, to engage on matters that pertain to public policy uh, instead of the economy. And interesting, uh, this year we're focusing on issues pertaining to domestic resource mobilization. Uh, this is an agenda that has to do with the manner in which taxes are collected in our country. But more importantly, how these taxes are utilized. We have an exciting panel of young people that are going to engage in this subject matter and they'll basically get to interrogate the extent to which we can uh, mobilize our resources locally, looking at some of the challenges that the country is facing currently. Young people would have to innovate and see which sectors uh, can help to deliver uh, on taxes uh, for Zambia, even as we think of the environment that we are in. Remember, the Minister of Finance will actually be delivering uh, the 2025 national budget before the National Assembly, but before then, what ideas, uh, what thoughts, what alternative options are young people uh, thinking of? It would be good for every policymaker, for every listener out there, uh, non-state actors, as well as those that are engaged uh, in various activities that speak to our economy to listen in uh, through Diamond TV, uh, the various ideas that young people are bringing forward with regards to how the 2025 national budget uh, will look like. We've heard from the Center for Trade Policy and Development, the money people for this specific project, but they're doing a lot more than just that. These seven contestants are now being empowered with knowledge on how taxation works and some of the critical parts that need attention in Zambia's taxation system. They get a training through the Center for Trade Policy and Development, and this will inform how they make their next presentation. Good afternoon, guys. Yeah, I would like to welcome you to CTPD again. Um, you know, to this uh, important afternoon where I'll be looking at uh, issues around tobacco control. So my name is Peter Mumba. Um, I do many things, but today I'm, uh, I'm, I'm here as a researcher uh, who focuses on issues around tobacco con con control and uh, other health-related uh, issues. It has three main components. The first component is the development component. The second one is the medical component. The third one is the economic uh, component. So we'll just briefly touch 
on those three so that we can have a broader kind of understanding. The production of tobacco, con I mean, the production of tobacco in itself, including its consumption, um, adds to the country's GDP. You know, like for example, um, we're talking about countries that rely on tobacco, such as Malawi. So the way Zambia relies on copper, where we you know, export copper and you know, st stuff like that, Malawi, on the other hand, exports tobacco. And that is where they, you know, they get a very large part of their GDP contribution from. Then on the medical side, uh, the medical component, we are saying that uh, because of using tobacco, abusing tobacco does come with a lot of um, um, medical alignments. And some of these do cause premature deaths, they cause illnesses, and uh, they also cause, you know, these illnesses and premature deaths cause a very, very large burden on families. Then now the economic impact, we are saying that because tobacco in itself is consumed and when it's consumed, it does have some negative effects such as illnesses, sicknesses and all those things, time lost to sicknesses. All those things have been quantified uh, in monetary value and related to a country's GDP, which is very, very important. So having said that, there has been a, an overwhelming response from the international community in terms of having to address tobacco and uh, some of the challenges um, it, it, it obviously brings forward. So now what they've done is that uh, they have come up with an agenda. We are calling this agenda the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, or the short term is FCTC. So this is an agenda that was developed uh, by the United Nations, of course. And the agenda is not necessarily to ban tobacco because they do realize that banning tobacco in itself can have its own implications. With that said, the contestants have a tough task ahead to convince the judges and the nation how they will increase taxation on tobacco, but also increase revenue mobilization for the country through other sectors, apart from just the mining sector. So here are the seven contestants, and this is their plan. Countrymen and women, Madam Speaker, my name is Sanga Francis, your Minister of National Finance and National Planning. Madam, with the Onino induced drought and the devastated crops, increased import uh, costs, as well as weakened the quacha, greatly reduced hydropower. I now present the 2025 revenue measures under the theme Domestic Revenue Mobilization Amidst a Drought, Energy Crisis, and Social Economic Reforms. Madam, my presentation this afternoon clearly focuses on direct taxes, customs and excise taxes, and as well the value added taxes. Direct taxes. Madam, in order to cushion the cost of living amidst a rise in inflation, among us other challenges faced, I propose to increase the pay as you earn exam threshold to 5,500 kwacha from 5,100 kwacha. With the resumption of a, and expansion of our operations of our major mines, I propose the deductibility and restriction of main royalty tax regime with respect to copper, of which the lowest rate of 5.5% for 4,500 US dollars below uh, per metric ton, and also the highest rate of 10% with 9,000 US dollars and above per metric ton, with estimated 2.9 billion revenue gain. To facilitate control and increase revenue on tobacco, I propose increase on specific excise duty on cigarettes to 473 kwacha from 400 kwacha per mile. Madam Speaker, this will ultimately reduce cigarette demand by 17% and also increase government revenue by 23.8% and also 1.2% annual GDP recovery. Madam Speaker, I propose a standard rate on all energy appliances equipment under the Group 70 rating order and also propose zero rate value added tax on all agricultural equipment and accessories and also maintain value added taxes rates on all other products. In conclusion, Madam Speaker, I say, when the desirable is not available, the available becomes desirable. Madam Speaker, I thank you and I beg to submit. Good afternoon, Madam Speaker and members of the National Assembly. My name is Divine Chorasha and I would like to take this opportunity to present a strategic tax measures for the 2025 national budget. One of the ways to achieve domestic resource mobilization is through an equitable taxation system. Madam Speaker, to alleviate the financial burden on our citizens amidst the rising living costs due to drought and energy crisis, I propose to increase the pay as you earn exempt threshold to 5,500 kwacha from 5,100 kwacha and adjust the tax ban 
sense to ensure a more progressive tax system. This measure will increase disposable income for salaried households by 1.2 billion kwacha. For tobacco excise taxes, recognizing the health and economic impact of tobacco consumption, the government is committed to regulating the production, sale, and consumption of tobacco products to safeguard public health. To support this initiative, I propose the following measures. Increase in specific excise duty on locally sold and imported cigarettes from 400 kwacha per mile to 450 kwacha per mile. To increase specific excise duty on unmanufactured tobacco, tobacco refuse, smoking tobacco and water pipe tobacco from 400 kwacha per kilogram to 450 kwacha per kilogram, as well as introducing an excise duty of 150% on electronic cigarettes and cartridges to discourage their use, especially amongst the youth. Madam Speaker, esteemed members of the Assembly, the measures I have outlined today are designed to navigate our nation through these challenging times while laying the foundation for a resilient and prosperous future. By ensuring equitable tax policies, we aim to foster economic growth, enhance public health, and improve the quality of life for all Zambians. Thank you. Madam Speaker, Honorable Members of the House and fellow citizens, I, Konina Stola, the Minister of Finance, am honored to stand before you today and present the national budget for the year 2025. Madam Speaker, I go straight to our area of interest today, which is the revenue side and specifically on taxation reforms. As part of our efforts to enhance the efficiency, equity and simplicity of our tax system, we have embarked on ambitious taxation reforms in our 2025 national budget that is themed domestic resource mobilization amidst drought crisis and socio-economic reforms. Madam Speaker, upon revamping our mining sector this year, I propose that we encourage value addition and job creation in the copper subsector by reducing the company income tax to 10% from 15% on companies that add value to copper cathodes. Madam Speaker, to significantly reduce the consumption of tobacco that is killing so many people and strengthen our domestic resource mobilization agenda, I propose to increase the excise duty on cigarettes and other tobacco-related products from 400 kwacha per mil to now 550 kwacha. In order to mitigate the effects of climate change and encourage sustainable industrialization, I propose to suspend import duty on machinery for processing waste to generate electricity and produce fertilizer. Madam Speaker, these reforms are a crucial step towards building a stronger, more prosperous future for our nation, and they are essential for achieving economic growth and improving the well-being of our hard-working citizens. I thank you. Madam Speaker, my name is Leonard Shishimbangria, the Finance Minister of the Republic of Zambia presenting the 2025 national budget under the theme Domestic Resource Mobilization Amidst the Drought, Energy Crisis and Social Economic Reform. Madam Speaker, the 2025 national budget aims to rise about 153 billion kwacha in total revenue, a 7% increase from last year, driven by strong tax compliance and improved revenue collection systems. Here is a breakdown of our ex expected revenue resource. Madam Speaker, the 2025 national budget proposes 5% increased excise duties on tobacco, which will raise 4 billion kwacha in revenue. 42 billion kwacha is expected to be generated from value-added tax. 18 billion kwacha will be generated from mining royalties with an adjustment of 3% to capture more from the global com commodity. In addition to in addition, 10 billion kwacha is expected from non-tax revenue sources such as fees, licenses, and dividends from state-owned enterprises. Madam Speaker, the tax structure for 2025 aims to mobilize domestic resources while balancing social economic reforms while addressing the energy crisis and coping with the impact of the drought. Increased revenue will allow for more investment in public health infrastructure and energy transition projects while ensuring Zambia's fiscal stability. May, Zambia, may God bless the Republic of Zambia. Thank you. Greetings, countrymen, women, and the youths. I'm a Minister of Finance and National Planning. As a bearer of the message from the Republican President of Zambia, my name is Emmanuel Sakala, Jr. The 2025 National Budget, Madam Speaker, 
aims to promote social economic reforms, enhance revenue through new tax measures, reduce tobacco consumption, in line with the World Health Organization Framework Convention, Article Number 6, and mitigate the impact on the ongoing drought energy crisis. Total revenue, 180 billion. Tax revenue, 144 billion, 80% of the total revenue. Non tax revenue, Madam Speaker, is at 18 billion, represented by 10%. Borrowing and grants at 18 billion, represented by 10%. Total expenditure, Madam Speaker, we're expected to spend 190 billion. Madam Speaker, debt servicing, who allocate 9.5 billion, represented by 5%. Madam Speaker, the crucial part of the budget is, is tobacco taxation and control measures. We increase the minimum specific tax on tobacco from 50 quarter to 200 quarter per 1,000 cigarettes. This increase will increase by 300% to set the price flow, reduce affordability, and discourage consumption, especially among young people. Madam Speaker, illicit trade control will strengthen tax administration and border control and implement digital tax stamps and tracking system to combat illicit tobacco trade. Madam Speaker, we are a government that cares for our farmers who do tobacco farming, and therefore as a government to provide one billion over three years to support tobacco farmers transition to alternative crops, especially drought-resistant crops. With this, Madam Speaker, in conclusion, this budget is aligned with the international health guidelines, reduce tobacco use, increase revenue, and strengthen Zambia Social Economic Foundation. I submit. Greetings countrymen and women, my name is Lilanda Victor, the Minister of Finance and National Planning, and I would like to present to you the 2025 national budget under the theme, Domestic Resource Mobilization Amidst a Drought, Energy Crisis and Socio-Economic Reforms. In order to cushion the rise in the cost of living, I propose to increase the exempt threshold for pay as you earn to 6,000 from 5,100 and reducing the top rate to 35% from 37%, as well as adjusting the income tax bands accordingly. This adjustment will reduce the taxable income for lower and middle income earners, providing them with essential financial relief. Madam Speaker, allow me to talk about the customs and excise duty. I propose an increase in excise duty for tobacco and tobacco products to more than 70% of the retail price. Tobacco use cost Zambia's economy 2.8 billion, which is 1.2% of our GDP. And according to a health World Health Organization Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, each year tobacco kills over 7,100 Zambians under the age of 70, hence robbing the nation with valuable human resource and also imposing a significant economic burden through healthcare costs and loss of productivity. To the recent launched Comprehensive Agriculture Transformation Support Program, the 2025 national budget will see to it that we provide tax deduction to exemptions for farmers and agribusiness investing in climate resilient agriculture techniques, drought resistant crops, and irrigation infrastructure. This will encourage sustainable agriculture practices. Madam Speaker, allow me to say that the government's emphasis on investing in renewable energy is evident through the strides made in offering tax credits and exemptions for business investing in renewable energy products, especially in solar and wind energy. This would attract private sector investment and reduce reliance on vulnerable energy sources. Madam Speaker, allow me to say and conclude, in times of crisis, resilience is not found in what we lack, but what we harness and mobilize what we have. Thank you very much. I thank you, Madam Speaker. My name is Nandun Chumia Isaac, Minister of Finance and National Planning, and I now present the revenue measures and tax reforms for the financial year 2025. Madam Speaker, government intends to raise 200.4 billion kwacha to meet the proposed expenditure. This amount will comprise 145.2 billion kwacha in domestic re revenue, of which 117.6 billion kwacha will be tax revenue, while 27.6 billion kwacha will be non-tax revenue. Madam Speaker, this will help cushion the financial burden on a significant number of workers. Madam Speaker, I propose the following concessions. One, exempt from withholding tax all energy efficient products, projects such as solar power plants, wind farms, and smart grids in order to encourage investment in the sector. This will be structured as follows. 5% credit for 25% adoption, 10% credit for 50% adoption, 15% credit for 75% adoption, and 20% credit for 100% adoption. Madam Speaker, under excise and customs duties, I propose the following. One, 
increased surtax on tobacco as follows. From 15% to 20% ad valorem on cigarettes and from 10% to 15% ad valorem on other tobacco products. Two, an increase in specific excise duty on cigarettes from 400 per mille to 450 per mille. Applicable to both imported and locally manufactured products. Three, increase specific is increase in specific excise duties on unmanufactured tobacco, tobacco refuse, and water pipe tobacco to 410 per kg. Four, four increase in specific duty on non-alcoholic beverages from 16 gwe per, per liter to 75 gwe per liter. Madam Speaker, the total revenue gain under customs and excise is estimated to be at 1.2 billion. Madam Speaker, I further make proposals of the following measures on tax. One, increase property uh, transfer tax from 10% I mean to 10%. This is inclusive of mining rights held by exploration companies. And two, restructure the wind for tax on coppers uh, as follows. 15% on profits uh, above 15% and 30% on profits above 25%. Madam Speaker, with these measures coupled with good policies, this will help us generate uh, much needed revenue and foster investment. I thank you very much. There you have it. That's all the seven contestants in this edition of the People's Budget. But unfortunately, we still have to trim the numbers down. From seven, this number has to come down to the top five. The judges have assessed and are ready to give their feedback to these contestants and decide on who's making it to the top five. Gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the elimination of this round. This is where, of course, we have sat as judges to deliberate what your inputs were um, in terms of the tax reforms that you're looking into where tobacco is concerned. And through a vigorous and interesting <laughs> time, I think we have managed to at least narrow it down. But before I break the news, I'm sure... Our uh, judges could have something to say. Should we start with Manu? Yeah, yeah. Okay. we start with Manu? <laughs> well, uh, I think you did well. Like she said, uh, you all deserve to be in the second phase. Uh, from what we saw, I think there was good preparation. Uh, research was done. And uh, I think generally there was understanding of what you were supposed to do. The focus of tobacco, of course, and, uh, you're also trying to look at uh, you know, the theme of your budget, which is the resource mobilization. So all those were aspects we are looking out for. So even as you are talking about allocations and all these, you know, where are you getting your resources? So the budget always has that umbrella, you know, so right. the two sides and all that. Uh, you guys look so serious. Yeah, no, I think I just echo their sentiments. You guys did great, uh, to be honest. Let me mention that, in fact, one of the judges rated one of you got about 98 out of 100. So that's how good you guys were. But like they mentioned, unfortunately, I think two of you love to go. Uh, but you did great. I think you researched very well. The statistics were coming out. And yeah, and the composure. I think you are well composed and uh, confident. And I think you did great. And we're looking forward to the results as well. I'm equally as just anxious as you guys are. Yeah. <laughs> right, as we get ready for elimination today, I do have two people that are going home today. Now, of course, like last time, I will give you your average score as well so that you're able to know how well you did or, you know, how well you didn't do. And the first names that I'm going to be calling up this morning, I mean this afternoon, I beg your pardon. Leonard Chishimba, if you'd come step forward, please. There was a lot that we liked from you and there was a lot that we didn't like from you. And on that note, you pulled in a average of 65.5 in total, which was impressive, but it wasn't enough to keep you in the competition. You did lack some confidence. It almost seemed like you were shaky. I don't know if you were unsure of your own script, but there was a lot of disconnect, I think, between you and your own script. 
They, you are not selling it. You are not convincing that this is the budget. You have to be convincing. You are the minister. You're addressing members of parliament. You're addressing the nation. We have to have confidence. If you don't have the confidence that we're going to have, who's going to have the confidence in your ministry and the works that you're doing? Emmanuel Sakala, if you could step forward. Divine as well, if you could step forward. You guys ain't going home, you can step back. With an average of 75.8, this was also a very good score. Mr. Trola, could you step forward? You're going home. This is the end of the road. Gentlemen, for the rest of you that are still in the competition, you know what it is. It's all about research. It's all about knowing your craft. It's about the confidence. It's being about, it's, it's, it's you being able to own the ministry that you are representing. For those that are remaining, amongst yourselves is a tough, tough, tough crowd. It's cutthroat. You gotta do what you need to do to get to the end of it all. Thank you. The judges have decided, and there you have it. That is your top five in episode two of season three of the People's Budget. Who is going to make it to the top three and ultimately be number one in this season? Join us for the next one. My name is Dingin Dava, Jonah Buyoya. <laughs>